Hey everyone, and welcome back to Nomi Factory. Last episode, we sent the Tier 2 Microminer, the first of our Tier 2s. We added five more Blast Furnaces for things including Tungsten and all of its variants, Neodymium and Red Alloy. We also now have a Multi Smeller, and an EV Assembling Machine, which allows us to create the next tier of circuits. Since we've now unlocked the EV components and have the ability to make EV machines, we are going to be adding our EV line today. The thing is, if we add an EV line, then we're going to have to upgrade our power generation and we're currently maxed out here. We're really, really pushing the limits of our DML system. And the reason for the limit is the poor rate of pulsating polymer clay, which basically fuels everything over there, which fuels the numismatic dynamos, which powers our base. So the first order of business is to upgrade pulsating polymer clay. To do this, we're first obviously going to have to build a few machines. You may remember at the end of last episode, we had some troubles with ethylene here which used to be used in order to make epoxy. However, I've since switched the recipe from ethylene oxygen to make acetic acid, which then continues for epoxy resin. And we are now doing oxygen hydrogen carbon dust for acetic acid. That way it takes the strain off the ethylene, which we also use in polyethylene and PVC. And I've also set up this little system here just to keep some more oxygen and hydrogen in stock. This electrolyzer will constantly electrolyze carbon dioxide dust. And then we have an electrolyzer here which electrolyzes excess hydrochloric acid which gives us chlorine and hydrogen. So that little fix with the fluids there means that we are now producing green boards. These are now at 230. That means we've unlocked the cheapest tier 3s. And if we check the late game tab here we've actually unlocked the third tier 4s. And what does all this mean? Well it basically means that we can make our pulsating polymer clay machines much easier. We are going to skip straight to EV for pulsating polymer clay. It's here right in the middle of the chunk. Yeah, we want them here. This is also kind of the point in the pack where things get a little bit spicy. <laughs> the energy inputs for EVCEFs is 32,768, which is only the 4 amp version. That exactly matches all of these end steel conduits, so we're at the maximum throughput for these things. But these are power connections, so it doesn't matter how many of them we have on the line. It's really all about total production over there. If we want to do 16 amp cables like the rest of the lines here, HV and MV, we need to obviously make the 16 amp EVCEF. However, this thing is 131,000 RF per tick. Not something our end steel conduits can handle. So for now, we're going to go with the 4 amp versions and we'll plug 16 amp cable into here, just to make it a bit more future proof so that we can upgrade later on. One upgrade we can make immediately here is to add another assembly machine. This thing is going to take in styrene butadiene rubber. This will be on configuration 28, which means it can coat 16 end steel wires at a time for straight to 16x cable, rather than using the crafting recipes here, which is much slower. And speaking of the cable, the lossless at EV is end steel. We'll immediately order like, I don't know, 20 of these things. End steel we have on passive over here. Okay, so I think that's about it for the preparations. I have a bit of a machine list here. Let's make some pulsating polymer clay. Alright, so yeah, all EV machines, we're going to start with three pulverizers. Let's hope we can press start on all of these things. Two EV chemical reactors, a fluid extractor, an EV single block electric furnace, a second multi smeller, that's a blast furnace, a second multi smeller, we'll go for nichrome coils for this, and one EV alloy smeller, I think is our total machine list. We also will need some form of cobblestone generator, I want to go with this dense version, however we're short around 60 lava and water buckets. So I think this is definitely something we should automate. Oops. Well, I guess that answers the question, you can rotate machines. <laughs> I didn't think that worked last episode. I've got two fluid canners here. One is getting water from a reservoir below. And once we hook up a fluid storage bus to our lava production over here, our cobble works. That should allow us to send lava into the second fluid canner here. And all we need now is two recipes. An empty bucket equals one water bucket. And an empty bucket equals one lava bucket. There, and that should automatically fill water buckets on demand for us which means we can get our cobblestone generator. Nice. All right, let's leave a little bit of space here and we are gonna start with the cobblestone generator into the pulverizers. Oh no, that was, <laughs> uh, mistakes were made here. I forgot this automatically generates cobblestone. Yeah, you know what? Let's take a little bit of inspiration from this system here. So we need to make cobble to gravel, gravel to sand, and then sand has to be split between a furnace for glass and split between another pulverizer for dust. So cobble to gravel, gravel to sand. That's going to get output to a buffer chest. And from here, we can split it between the multi smelter, which will smelt into glass. I can go around here. No, actually, it can't go here because coils have to go in the middle and the input bus has to be either bottom or the top. 
Aha, what if we do something like this instead? So it's going to go up the way, sand will end up here, where it gets split between this pulverizer to make dust, split between another buffer chest, so we put two robot arms on these faces of the chest, and then an additional conveyor to take it between this chest and an input bus. Maybe we can't put it on the front face of the chest though. Yeah, conveyor here. And the reason we're doing robot arms is we can exactly specify the transfer rate. Iron conduits here are nowhere near fast enough. You're going to see how, just how quick this is. But yeah, our multi smelter will go on the opposite side. We'll need an EV energy hatch for this thing, which will go here. And the smelter will look something like this with the output bus on the bottom side this time. Let's replace the cobblestone generator. So we're making gravel, we're making sand. That's going to go to the buffer chest. Let's make sure we specify the robotic arm. We'll start it at one item a second, which is obviously way too slow. But the trick is to match the production rate between the transfer rate between these two things so that it round robins. Okay, let's handle this dust part. This is where it sort of splits in two. So we're getting glass and we're getting dust. The dust we have to chemical react in water. I think we're going to have to use the end of water to provide water. Although hopefully today we can access the aqueous accumulator, which I believe has been buffed here. So it's like really, really quick water. Awesome, so this is making us clay. With the water bottleneck though, we may have to add some more conduit connections here. Mm, man, these things are horrible. <laughs> it's like, I think it's a bucket a second these things give, which is not enough for this. Let's add more. Like I say, hopefully we can swap this out this episode. That allows us to put more conduit connections here. <laughs> oh man, that looks so ugly. Alright, so with the clay, we need to alloy smelt. Guess the alloy smelter can go here and plug it in with some power. I think we'll need a robot arm though, just to make sure that it doesn't fill both slots. Yeah, I think if we use the item filler here, I have it on keep exact, and we specify this for exactly one stack of clay, then it shouldn't overfill the machine. Okay, so that's the first half of the system done, and I knew I was missing a machine. We need an electrolyzer here. The electrolyzer is for the glass coming out of the multi smeller, and we're going to place a buffer here just in case we need more than one electrolyzer. EV conveyor on the chest, and we're making nether quartz. Next, we need our fluid extractor and chemical reactor. The nether quartz is going to be chemical reacted with liquid ender or molten ender. I believe we have an ender chest frequency set for this, yeah. Should be double white green. Uh huh, conveyor to pull in the pearls. Set to import. Very good, this gives us molten ender which we have to put into this chemical reactor. I think for this an ender fluid conduit is sufficient. Automatically output the nether quartz. Oh yeah, and pl <laughs> plug the machine in. Okay, nice. This is giving us the resonant clath rates. We will make sure to buffer this since we need it later on today. So from here, we send this into an electric furnace, the last of our machines. Some conduit, I think, for this stage is going to be sufficient. This gives us pulsating dust, which again, we want to buffer. And again, the same robot arm trick, just to avoid overfilling the machine. Keep exact 64 pulsating dust. Let's actually move these drawers around a little bit, just to put the controller in the middle. One will be for the pulsating dust, and one will be for pulsating polymer clay. Lock both the drawers, and I think we just want max storage upgrades on these. So this has been running a few minutes, I've been doing some testing here with the transfer rates. By the way, we're already up to 2,000, <laughs> 2,500 pulsating polymer clay. I found that given the dust, or to the left hand side, 6 items per second, and the multi smelter 8 items per second is a really nice balance. It keeps all of these machines at 100% uptime here, and is actually more than enough to feed this chemical reactor. I also switched the drawers here with a controller slave, and put the drawer controller above. That means that we can hook up a storage bus onto this thing. And we should now see all of our polymer clay. Uh oh, no network power. Uh oh, <laughs> have we really maxed this thing out? Oh, it happened. It happened. Yep, I told you things would get spicy. Yeah, because we built this at EV, it means that we're now stealing too much power away from the rest of the base. And we need to give our dynamos another upgrade. Maybe the last upgrade until our reactor. But if we add more numismatic dynamos, it means that we have to also add more shulker models so that we don't bleed diamonds. We need to start to buffer an excess of diamonds because we need a lot of them. <laughs> Millions of them.
So with 16 additional reinforced dynamos, that takes the power output to 3,500. We're back down to around half on each of these things. And that's with the polymer clay running over there. But my goodness, is this, these gears slow. I did pre-craft some before the episode, but not enough because <laughs> we're making gears over here in this extruder. And it's something like a couple of minutes per gear. And that's just unacceptable. So we need to do something about that today. <laughs> we may have a solution though. But anyways, we also expanded our simulation chambers here. There is 10 per row, so we're running 40 of these things. So to get some numbers out of the way, we basically, right, we need diamonds for each one of these numismatic dynamos to, in order to power it. The diamonds come from the pristines that come from shulker data models, and we get six at a time. So the math works out that we need nine shulker models at least. The number of shulker models does depend on which tier you run the dynamos at. We have these at reinforced. The next upgrade after reinforced is signalum, which we can't yet make. Maybe today, maybe we get onto that today, I'm not sure. But yeah, let's take out all of these data models and we'll just do a full reset here, just so that we know exactly what is going on. And this is where the forward planning comes into play here. Look at all these data models we've built up. These are the ones that were leveled to self-aware and then we swapped out for basic, as this is the point in the game where we need these things, so it's nice to be able to actually have them. But yeah, we need at least 9 shulkers, we'll run 10. At least 10 to start buffering diamonds. We also have to consider the number of Enderman data models, as Endermen are used to produce pearls. And we need pearls for polymer clay here as it, we use molten ender. So we have to have at least enough to self-sustain the system and also buffer excess ender pearls. And the number of enderman models depends on how many simulation chambers you have. Because we have 40, the number works out to 6.451, something like that. So it means we need seven at least enderman models. Let's put those in the second row here. I mean, we may as well run 10 of these things. Let's run 10 endermen. Oh man, this is too cramped. I should have... <laughs> I should have put a, cu a couple of extra blocks at least in here. Okay, we got the essentials. The rest we can fill out with uh, all the other ones that we need for to fabricate all of this loot. And once everything is swapped out, the new list is as follows. I can't really say for sure what you should run in simulation chambers, it, as it depends on how your base is set up and how your passive processes are set up for resource demand. It really all just depends. And so this is going to take some tweaking. The final limit that we have to pay attention to is the number of loot fabricators per simulation chamber. But that works out to 19.66 and we're not at that stage yet. We're not running 19 of the same model. So we don't have to expand these loot fabricators yet. So yeah, with the new polymer clay at EV, we can support over 92 simulation chambers. And we are currently at 40, so we have room to expand this further. Alright, so the upgrades that we just made are only going to last so long, to be honest. The power requirements are going to skyrocket from here, especially as we start to add EV machines. And there is also the issue of this extruder over here with the gears. Unacceptable. <laughs> so let's fix this. Actually, wait a second. There was one reinforced upgrade kit we were missing. And you want to make sure that you have max fuel catalyzers in here as well. Okay, now we're done. Now we're done. <laughs> okay, guys, I just want to warn... If you haven't seen this before, buckle up. <laughs> so the next things we want to work towards is Lumium Signalum and also this compactor over here to make gears. All of these components are going to take some mana dust. To make Lumium, we need Primal Mana from the Mana Dust. And we also need Lumium Blend, which looks like this. But this is not the worst of it, the Signalum. <laughs> oh man, the Signalum, look at this. This is Red Alloy Dust and Yield Copper Dust, Destabilized Clathrates, and Ardite. And you may be thinking, well, Ardite is just Red Steel and Blaze. Red Steel is Sterling Silver, Bismuth Bronze, Steel, and Black Steel, which is this mess here. <laughs> so all of this we are going to passive. Let's start at the beginning here with the Mana Dust. We are going to need Blizz, Blitz, Basols, and Blaze Powder. So I've added some more loot fabricators to support thermal data models. And we are now automatically producing Blizz Rods. Wait, that's Blitz. That's <laughs> Blitz Rods. Basols Rods. Blitz Rods. Obsidian Dust. Salt Peter. And Snowballs. I set the emitters on these quite high at 512. Maybe we bring this down to just two stacks. Yeah, we want to make sure that we retain a buffer for when we start nuclear craft, as we do need a lot of thermals to be able to cool our reactor. Oh yeah, and one last thing, the snowballs here, which we're making from thermal pristines, this is only a temporary measure. We can also make it in a glacial precipitator, but we need mana dust for that, so we'll switch that out when we have mana dust. So yeah, speaking of the mana dust, we need a bit of extra space on our platform here. I want to make all of these machines at HV, since it's going to be passive, we don't need the machine speed of EV. And I don't want to put that much strain on our new power system. Hmm, is one chunk going to be enough? I don't know if it is, honestly. I'm going to make two. Okay, let's give ourselves some space here. We'll start in this new chunk. 
And we first need to turn all of the rods that we're getting from DML into their powder versions, which means that we can either craft them or we can pulverize them, but pulverize gives more yield. So we'll go with four macerators here. One for each rod. Remember, we want to build buffers in everywhere, so all of these dusts will get their own drawer. So these are going to be filtered blizz. Let's see if I say it right this time. I noticed that <laughs> I corrected myself and then immediately made the same mistake. Blizz, basols, blaze, and blitz. And plug in the interface. All the machines will output to the left. And step one is complete. So from here we turn each powder into the respective dust. All requiring redstone and then a catalyst item. In this case, snowballs. First of all, the Blitz takes Saltpeter, one of the items we filtered from DML. Blaze takes Sulphur, we're getting this all over the place. Basols takes Obsidian Dust, something else we just added to DML. And the Blitz takes Snowballs. All of those have to come from this interface here. And all of these filters must be limited item fillers so that we don't overfill the input inventories here. Oh yeah, and we do also want to block the output inventory just so that we only buffer a stack. Aerothium Dust, Pyrothium Dust, Heterothium Dust, and Cryothium Dust. We're going to learn our mistakes from last run and put downgrades on all these. Last time I ran through so many resources doing this. I think I ran out of redstone and sulfur, ev basically everything. We will need a drawer controller and some trim to connect the networks. We can put our storage bus on this one, I think. And we need a way to insert, actually, so we'll extend the item conduit along. And everything will be insert blue in the, in the controller. Alright, so from here we have to make our mana dust. We can also craft nether stars this way, using some extra nether quartz, but we're not going to set that up at the moment, at least not here. We are concentrated here on the mana dust, which also requires diamond dust. So we are going to require another macerator for this. Yeah, the diamonds we macerate and then store one stack in the drawer. Then we've also filtered each four of these dusts in the interface and filtered into this crafter, which means that we can set the recipe for mana dust after we limit the output. Very good, we're making mana dust. This we definitely want to buffer. Let's get a downgrade for this and also some extract speeds on the conduits. I think we'll need some extracts in these. Okay, so from here we can do two things with this actually. We can make primal mana, which we need for all of these device frames. Actually, there's four things we can do with mana dust. We can turn it into fluxed electrum. Oh yeah, it was this thing. The quantum fluxed eternium heavy plating. <laughs> this is for tier nines. Not something we're going to look at right now. However, we can also mix it for manulin, again something we're going to skip over. We are going to, however, mix it with titanium dust for mana infused metal, and also round robin between a fluid extractor for primal mana, the fluid. Those are the two things that we need right now. So we need another macerator for titanium. Lots and lots of machines. <laughs> macerator for titanium. Storage drawer to buffer, just in case. Mixer for the mana infused metal. Nice, so after some filtering, we got mana infused metal dust. Ah, no quest for this. We still need the primal mana, which means we need a fluid extractor. I'm sure I crafted one of those. We are not going to buffer too much of this stuff. For now, we're just going to place a fluid storage bus directly on the machine. Extract only and high priority. I guess we leave space for a tank in the future if we need it. But since the recipes on the blast furnaces are slow, slow anyway, we don't really need to buffer too much of this primal mana at this stage. Let's get our quest. And this leads us into the mana infused ingot, which means we need a blast furnace for this. So that's exactly why we left some space here. Hopefully we have enough nichrome for coils. 147? Yeah, that should be enough. We only need 10 coils, I think. One more blast furnace addition to our base. We should have some mana infused ingots in here. Perfect. Quest complete. Let's set the storage monitor. So it's a very standard blast furnace setup here that we have. Limited item filter the dust into the input bus. And we have an input hatch back here with a fluid interface above. And you don't even need to use a pump when you're doing this either. The input hatch will automatically pull from the fluid interface, which is really nice. Oh, this one is only 20 seconds. I have the level emitter set at 512. That honestly may be too high for mana infused ingots, I'm not sure. Now that we have the mana infused ingots, it's a very simple crafting recipe for the Aqueous Accumulator. These are just some basic components and the thermal device casing is just 8 mana infused ingots. Oh yeah, of course this takes a gear. Yeah. <laughs> Infinitist War? Is that what that says? <laughs> Either way, we can swap out this mess here. Add the accumulator, which should send water as fast as this thing can use it. Yeah, it looks like it's not every tick, but it's it's way fast enough. The only downsides with these is I don't think you can mute them in any way. Even with the sound muffler, if I remember correctly. Oh yeah, that's looking much better than it was. <laughs> I mean, not that we really care about aesthetics here. 
I mean, the whole base looked kind of horrible, to be honest. You know, as I'm getting more invested in the series, though, I'm kind of, like, maybe wanting to invest in some aesthetic work. So maybe after we get Creative Tank, I don't know, let me, let me know what you guys think on that. Okay, now comes the part I've been putting off a little bit, and uh, that is to make this Signalum and Lumium blend. Let's see how big this machine wall gets. Oh man, so many conduits to filter here. Look at this. <laughs> but we got Lumium being buffered here. And once we set the recipe, I think, in this crafter, this should give us Signalum blend. So basically all of these buffer drawers have some sort of downgrade on them. And the reason for that is, well, this is expensive. <laughs> Not everything here is free and can, we can obtain from DML. For a lot of the things that is actually the case, such as the fact that we need molten redstone and glowstone, those are used in both of the clathrates, just mixed with some nether quartz. And the nether quartz we get from cobbleworks over here. This has been building up for a couple of episodes by now and we have 18,000. Oh yeah, you might be wondering why we remade nether quartz over there at the beginning of this episode instead of just taking from that one over there. And the reason is I wanted this system to be fully self-contained, maybe besides the import of pearls. But it's just easier to calculate everything out and have that self-contained. And we use the nether quartz from cobbleworks for things like lumium and signalum. But yeah, the rest of lumium is fairly easy, it's just tin alloy, so we macerate tin dust. Mix that with iron dust, which we already have on passive. Then we mix silver and copper for sterling silver. And we put all that together with the clathrates and luminescence for lumium. So the luminescence is made over here, that's part of the microminer system, and we are currently waiting on some more appetite for that. That is our bottleneck, which is stopping us producing more luminescence. However, that along with some other materials we are going to get from ore processing, which I would like to look at the next couple of episodes, whenever we break into IV, which I think is going to be soon actually. So yeah, lumium, actually quite easy. The signalum on the other hand, well, <laughs> we got more clathrates this time with redstone. Then we macerate red alloy ingots for red alloy dust. We macerate annealed copper for annealed copper dust. This macerator here is actually meant for brass. So to make brass we need zinc and I think it's copper. Yeah, zinc plus copper and an alloy smelter will give us brass. However, we don't have any way to passively produce zinc. That is else, something else that we're going to get from ore processing. Mm, looks like it's not made its way through, but we get it from sphalerite. And sphalerite we actually get from tier 2 microminer, so it's fairly easy to get. It's just a matter of processing it, so all the more reason we need to actually upgrade this thing again. But yeah, that is brass. The brass is then mixed along with bismuth to give us bismuth bronze. Bismuth comes from cassiterite ore. And Cassiterite we get out of the tier 1 micro miner here. And then all of that is put together for the red steel. And this black steel, I don't know if you remember, we actually made already with the red colon things. That is made over here. We had to produce this as part of the tier 1 micro miner. So we have a stock here of black steel. The last part is Ardite, which is red steel plus blaze powder. We actually just produced blaze powder over here through this macerator. And that gives us Signalum. Easy. Easy. <laughs> Easy. Oh my goodness. But yeah, we are not going to get the quest for this today, it's locked behind the tungsten steel coil blocks, as that is the minimum tier of coil we need. Fortunately, we are up to over 300. But yeah, I really wanted to finish this off before, before the start of next episode at least. And with that, I think we're going to wrap this one up here. So we did upgrade our polymer clay, it's now sitting at around, oh wow, just about to hit 20,000. But yeah, we did also increase our power and upgrade DML. The power is now at around half. In fact, we're now under 3,000 with everything settled down. But yeah, we're making some good strides through the mid-game here, and I think next episode we're going to look into cryogenic air distillation, and perhaps start to think about our first nuclear reactor, that's going to be a lot of fun. But yeah, until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon for some more Nomi Factory.